Hey guys, it's the Faceless Beanie and welcome to my Railjack Beginner's Guide. I made one in 2020, but with the recent updates, many aspects of that guide are now outdated and are reflected in this updated guide. Let's get into it. There's two ways to obtain your very own Railjack. The first via completion of the solo only quest, Rising Tide, which is unlocked once you complete the second dream quest. To access the quest, you must also have access to a clan's dojo with a dry dock constructed. These are the dry dock construction resource requirements for different clan sizes. You then proceed to research the Railjack Cephalon from the Dry Docks Research Console, continuing to build the blueprint in the foundry with these resources. Then proceed to recover six different parts of the Railjack ship from quest missions and repair them in the foundry. Each part takes an hour to repair and cannot be rushed. Here are all the resources you'll need for all six parts. You will then have access to your Railjack. If you want to bypass all this farming, then you can also purchase a fully built Railjack for 400 Platinum from the market. Remember that you don't need your own Railjack to actually play Railjack. You can simply join others on their Railjacks via the navigation menu. This is the recommended way to farm Railjack resources before getting your own Railjack. Now that you have your Railjack, you'll have access to the configuration panel. Let's go through each section. The first are your components, which make up your Railjack. The shields improve your shields, the engines improve your flying speed, Plating increases your Railjack's hull and armor, hull translates to health here, and the reactor buffs your Railjack mods, which we'll get into later, just keep this in mind. Then the armaments, these are your Railjack's weapons. The first are the turrets that your pilot controls, in most cases this is you, and this is the gun you'll control directly. The second are the turrets your crewmates control, whether they are AI or other players. Two others can control these turrets. Finally your ordnance, which is a high crit, high damage weapon with a slow reloading time and limited ammo. By default, the Sigma versions of all components are equipped and the Apoch, Pulsar and Tycho Seeker are equipped for your armaments. There's two ways to get better gear. The first is to build them from the research panel where you have access to better versions of the Sigma parts as well as access to every type of Railjack weapon in the game as well as improved ordinances. If you go down this route, make sure to save up for the Mark III parts. For much better gear, farm them from Railjack missions, where you'll be able to farm parts from the three separate houses, Zetki, Lavan and Vidar. Each house provides a different combination of stats. Once you farm these parts, they'll be in your Railjack inventory as wreckage. You then need to repair them with Railjack resources. Component repairs take 12 hours, while armament repairs take 2 hours. For components you have fully built, you have a base capacity of 8 and you can keep purchasing 2 additional slots for them at a time for 12 platinum. For unrepaired wreckage, you have a maximum capacity of 30. If you exceed this limit, the game prevents you from playing unless you scrap some of them for endo. Let's move on to Railjack mods via the Plexus. The Plexus is a part of you rather than your Railjack, in that your own configuration will apply regardless of whose Railjack you're on. You can access the Plexus from the Dry Docks configuration panel or from your Orbiter right here. You can apply Forma to the Plexus just like a weapon or Warframe as the mods work like any other mod in the game. You'll have to rank them up with Endo as well. Mods are split into three categories, Integrated, Battle and Tactical. Integrated mods are passive mods that either improve the survivability and speed of your railjack, the damage of your weapons or some form of utility. You can equip an Aura Forma for these. Battle mods are active mods that you use to kill enemy fighters much quicker. These expend increasingly more energy if used repeatedly within a short time. There's three slots, the defensive slot, the offensive slot and the super slot, all of which have specific mods that can fit in these slots. The super slot uses the most energy and tends to be the most powerful. Finally, tactical mods are also active mods but these assist with handling real jack repairs or providing buffs instead and have long cooldowns. Same thing here, 3 slots, defensive, offensive and super with super having the longest cooldowns. Moving on to intrinsics which are essentially real jack affinity. You earn intrinsic points by playing real jack and you spec these into 5 categories. Tactical allows you to use your tactical mods from the tactical menu and improves them as well as providing you with an edge in battle. Rank 4 unlocks the ability to teleport back to your railjack from wherever you are.
Rank 5 unlocks the ability to use Necromax in Wheeljack missions and Rank 8 provides universal Arcwing Blink. Piloting improves your ability to maneuver your Railjack. Rank 5 is recommended as it improves your Railjack vacuum for loot. Gunnery improves your Railjack turrets. Notably, Rank 2 allows gunners to have a 360 view. Rank 6 and 7 help with heat accretion of your turret. And Rank 9 allows a quick reset of overheated turrets. Engineering is all about improving your forge, which will be explained shortly, as well as assisting with repairs on board your Railjack. Finally, the command intrinsic is for solo play. These will be crew members that will fill in for real players. Ranks 1, 3 and 5 unlock new crew members, while ranks 2, 4 and 6 allow you to provide additional points to your crew members. Rank 8 allows a converted Kuva Lich to help you out as well. Command intrinsics are a whole system on their own and have been explained in a separate video, so I won't talk too much about them here. Let's move on to actual gameplay and an explanation of mechanics as well as certain Railjack mission objectives. So your ship layout, pilot seat, navigation portal, forward artillery. Forward artillery is your super weapon. You'll use this for taking down cruise ships, which I'll show soon. The two turrets are located in the middle of the ship over here. At the upper rear of the ship is your slingshot, which allows you to launch your arcwing furiously towards a point of interest. At the bottom rear is your forge. This is where you replenish revelites for the omni tool used to repair hazards. Ammo for ordnances and dome charges for forward artillery. You can also replenish energy or repair your hull, but you should just ignore these. The materials shown above are the materials you need to use your forge and you'll actively pick them up throughout the mission. Hitting L on PC or RB on consoles brings up the tactical menu, which allows you to teleport to different parts of your ship instantly. This also brings up your tactical mods. The Omni tool is automatically equipped in your gear. Use this for repairing hazards with Revelite, a player-sided resource. There's three different hazards, electrical, which disable your tactical menu, ice, which freezes parts of your railjack like the pilot seat or doors or turrets, and fire, which causes weapons to overheat quicker. Of course, if your railjack's hull goes to zero, then we have the fourth hazard, a catastrophic hull breach. When this occurs, you have one minute to patch it up or the mission fails. Okay, assuming you play with other players, the roles are generally as follows. One player as the engineer. The job here is mainly to have your Omni tool out and repair hazards on the ship. Note that repairs should be sparse. Save rev light such that you don't have to replenish too frequently in the forge. Hull breaches should be prioritized, but you have a minute to repair those, so manage your time accordingly. Engineers also man the forge, but here only ordnance ammo and forward artillery dome charges matter for the rest of the team, so communicate whichever is required, usually the latter. Revelite is player sided, so the engineer will replenish Revelite for himself alone. Of course, this affects the forge cooldown for everyone. Next, the pilot, which is usually the owner of the railjack. Stay close to enemies and get rid of cruise ships. Hit the critical point of cruise ships for a one hit with the forward artillery, which is one of the engines. Next, the gunner, self-explanatory. The final slot depends on the team. It can just be a defender assisting the engineer or a player who goes into his arc wing to blow up cruise ships to assist the pilot. This is completely subjective. Moving on to Railjack missions. I'll split this by Grenier and Corpus. Grenier Railjack missions are all skirmish missions, involving two common objectives and maybe up to two additional point of interest objectives. The two common objectives are to kill fighters and destroy cruise ships. Cruise ships can be one hit with forward artillery by hitting their weak points, their engines. Optionally, you can board the cruise ships and detonate them internally. In harder missions, the cruise ships will have shields over them which you can remove with one hit from your ordnances, then proceed to your forward artillery as usual. The points of interest objectives involve one player getting off the railjack and infiltrating a Grenier ship, usually to blow it up or to assassinate a boss within. Some phases of these objectives require the railjack crew to assist to destroy turrets from the outside. If you're solo, you'd have to get on your own and destroy them, then go back in.
Corpus missions, on the other hand, involve two distinct phases. The first phase is the Railjack phase, which requires destruction of cruise ships and security nodes on the Corpus ship and or infiltration of a point of interest. The points of interest usually involve a combination of mobile defense and assassination. Higher level Corpus missions have two different types of cruise ships, one which has three security nodes on its back that must be destroyed before it is vulnerable to forward artillery, and the other which has a shield right in front of it. The one with the shield right in front of it can be destroyed with the four tor if you're using it since it has innate punch through, or you can just use the shatter burst battle avionic. Once this phase is complete, you'll enter phase 2, which doesn't require any usage of your railjack at all. It's a ground mission entirely. Right now, there's defense and exterminate from core warframe, which I don't need to explain. In addition to Orphix, which is the return of Orphix Venom as a permanent game mode for which countless guides are already available, so I'll focus on Volatile. In Volatile, all you're doing is monitoring how hot the reactor is getting based on the bar on the left. If it gets too hot, Cephalon size hacking progress will be halted. To release heat, destroy vents which are highlighted by an orange cube on your minimap. During the mission, a highlighted enemy, the engineer, will enter and try to stop the operations entirely. If he stops the reactor, you'll need to turn it on again. If the reactor overheats and you can't recover within 15 seconds, you fail. If not, you succeed and head back to your railjack. But you're not done yet. Get into the pilot seat and position to destroy three critical hit points with your forward artillery till the corpus ship goes boom. I'll end with a couple of quick tips. You're always going to be better off starting by playing with someone else's railjack. Farm some stronger components and armaments together, build them, then set off on your own. You probably also will farm enough intrinsics by this point to be able to spec up to the basics easily. Intrinsics will always be slow at the start. Try to enter cruise ships manually and stealth kill as many enemies as possible to hasten the process. Points of interest will always generate more infinity than whatever you can do in your railjack alone. The second phase of corpus missions is also good for intrinsic farming. Command intrinsic is particularly powerful if you want to solo, as your pilot will steer your ship clear of danger and gunners have aimbot while the engineer patches everything up without using revelite. However, if you're trying to farm intrinsics, make sure you don't use a gunner as they don't give you any affinity from their kills. As railjack mods utilize your own Warframe's energy, using a Warframe like Protea with dispensary can really help. It can also be a good idea to have a good amount of energy pizzas in stock in case you need them for energy replenishment. That's about it. I hope this helped you out. This is the Faceless Beanie, signing out.